Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us uh, start this lecture 35 with a thought process from Isaac Asimov, who says that the saddest aspect of life right now is that science gathers knowledge faster than the society gathers wisdom. So, very important and also very critical. And uh, let us recall what we learned in the last lecture. And last lecture basically we have looked at the analysis of turbo fan engines right and then uh, we looked at the parametric you know uh, characteristics of the turbo fan engines and we have learnt that you know the bypass ratio and uh, the fan pressure ratio compressor pressure ratio plays a very important role and by enhancing the bypass ratio, we can reduce the TSFC. And very important thing that we have learned that whenever we take care of the losses, the TSFC goes on increasing for a particular fixed parameter, right. And whereas the specific thrust being reduced, and of course, the propulsive efficiency gets enhanced, but the thermal efficiency reduced. So, overall efficiency basically reduced whenever you uh, take care of losses in the analysis. Now, uh, we will take up an example as usual to illustrate how we can solve this problem without really resorting to this parametric analysis that means, which is being carried out. We will be doing very systematic way and uh, which can be you know uh, basically done by hand, not by using computers. And for computer, you will have to use the uh, equations which were derived for parametric analysis. A turbo fan engine is flying at flight Mach number of 0.85 at an altitude of 10 kilometer. The pressure ratio across the compressor with the polytropic efficiency of 85 percent is uh, you know 10. That means, pressure ratio across the compressor is 10, but total pressure ratio will be dependent on what is the fan pressure. In this case, the pressure ratio across the fan is 2. So, the total pressure due to the compression will be 20 in this example, that you keep in mind. And this fan has polytropic efficiency of 82 percent. At the combustion chamber exit, temperature is 1600 Kelvin. The burner has an efficiency of 94 percent and total pressure ratio of 0.95. That means, 5 percent losses will be there in pressure, total pressure in the combustion chamber. The bypass ratio of the turbo fan is 5. We have taken in this example two separate conversion nozzle with the same isentropy of 95 percent is used to produce the thrust. You know here it is given the same uh, uh, isentropic efficiency for the both nozzle, but need not to be and it is not mixed together. There might be turbo fan engine where it will be mixed and expanded in a single nozzle right, which I have not taken in your this thing, but however, it may be required to solve uh, you know look at these things for, uh, from your side. The mechanical efficiency of this engine assumed to be 95 percent, total pressure recovery factor in air intake is 0 0.91. We need to determine the specific thrust, the specific fuel consumption, propulsive efficiency, thermal efficiency, overall efficiency. Of course, uh, you know one can find out uh, under the static condition what it would be these values, right, if it consumes 150 kg of second. I think the first part we will look at it and second part I will leave as an assignment kind of thing. The first part means uh, whenever it is at the flight Mach number 0.8, we will be, uh, we'll be considering that. 
So, of course, those uh, values of the gamma g and uh, gamma a is given. Keep in mind this gamma z what we will be using is 1.333 or you know it is not 1.3 right what I mentioned here. Uh, these are the conditions which I uh, want to skip basically and if you look at bypass ratio 0 0.5 and uh, at the altitude 10 kilometer T naught is 2 to 3.3 Kelvin, P naught is 26.5, pi c is 10. And these are the values which you are given, I have just jotted down and uh, what we will do basically we will have to find out total thrust, right. Total thrust if you look at it is the m dot c that is the mass flow rate through the core of the engines which is passing through v 9 minus v naught plus a 9 uh, multiplied by p 9 minus p naught the pressure difference across the plus that is a for the fan this is again m dot f into v 9 minus v naught plus a 19 into p 19 minus p naught right. So, what we will do? We will have to basically uh, you know find out the flight uh, what you call velocity. What it would be? V naught will be uh, can be easily determined because we know the temperature T naught, we know the Mach number. So, V naught will be gamma you know this will be uh, gamma A R T naught into Mach number. So, all these values are given to you, you can get substitute these values and you will get 254.6 meter per second like. And uh, for isentropic flow, uh, you know we know that T T 2 is equal to T T naught right. Keep in mind this air intake, we are not adding you know any work or nor some heat is going out. So, therefore, the temperature remain constant and T T naught is can be you know related to T naught in terms of Mach number and which we know very well and substitute these values of Mach number gamma A you will get these values. So, uh, of course, the pressure we can get P T naught by P naught for an isentropic can be related to T T naught by T naught power to the gamma A divided by gamma minus A gamma A minus 1 and you substitute those values you will get 1.6 it happens to be. This is due to what? Due to the ram pressure basically, right? Because of it is coming and then you are saying you will attain the stagnation state, what it would be the pressure ratio, right? Total pressure to the static pressure. So, uh, we let us just uh, keep this in mind. Uh, these are the uh, turbofan schematic with the station number 0, 2, and of course, there is a 13 for the fan and 19 for the fan, that is the nozzle and station 3 to 4 is combustion chamber, of course, 2 to 3 in the case of core engine is, is a compressor and 4 to 5 your turbine and 5 to 9 nozzle, but actually nozzle will start from here that is 7, <coughs> but we are saying the station 5 is same as the station condition that means properties like total pressure, total temperature is remaining same, but in real situation it would not be. Right, but in this even in the real cycle we are considering that. So, if you look at the processes 0 to T T 2 it is in the air intake and from 2 to 3 is your compressor and 3 to 4 is your combustion chamber and 4 to 5 the turbine both the high pressure and low pressure turbine and 5 to 9 is your nozzle. And this is of course, for the uh, fan engine right this is fan engine and this 0 to 2 is your uh, air intake and 2 to 3 is your fan and 13 to 19 you know this point is 19 basically uh, that is your fan nozzle. So, you should keep this station number because as you go along we will be uh, you know uh, solving and using this station number. So, uh, as the PR pressure recovery factor in the air intake nozzle is 0 0.9, we can very easily find out total pressure ratio at station 2 that is P T 2 by P T naught and this is nothing but your P R F which is 0 0.91 and P T naught by P naught already we have determined that is 1.6 and P naught of course, we know from the altitude that is 26.5 
5 and when you substitute these values and get that, that will you will get P T 2 as 38.6 kilo Pascals. Here what we are doing? Each point we are solving. Sometimes you may find it is not required, okay. but particularly real cycle it will be very essential. But in ideal cycle you can skip some of the calculations if you use it intelligently. But in real cycle it will be little tricky, you know. For fan stream, the pressure ratio across the fan that is pi f becomes, you know, it is a straightforward that is P T 13 by P T 2, right, and that is given as 2. So, you can get directly P T 13 because this is known, right, P T 2 is known, already you have evaluated. So, you can get directly P T 13. And we can estimate the temperature at the station 13 by, you know, uh, assuming that T 19 is same as the 13. Okay, I mean, of course, this is an and is T T 13 by T T T 2 will be again P 13 by P T 2. And this is uh, what you call fan pressure ratio is given P T 13 by P T 2. That is nothing but your 2. Polytropic efficiency we are not considering we will have to consider that uh, for the fan we need to consider the polytropic efficiency right p f right we need to consider that and when we will uh, substitute these values you will get as uh, you know t 13 is equal to 324.56 and critical pressure ratio across the nozzle can be determined as you know because we need to find out whether it is a uh, critical or not. Keep in mind we are assuming that the nozzle is a conversion nozzle because generally in the turbofan engine nobody really uses a conversion diversion nozzle because not required right. And mostly it will be flying at uh, uh, not only the subsonic flow, but in case of even fighter aircraft people are using nowadays turbofan engine with very low bypass ratio, right? Not high bypass ratio of five. Five generally it is being used for the long range passenger aircraft, where which will be moving at all in the level flight of 0 0.8, my flight Mach number of 0.85 generally around 8, 8.85 generally. But here we are assuming the nozzle to be a conversion nozzle, right? And uh, that assumption. I had not mentioned, but whenever you are doing, you need to. It is not given in the problem. Am I right? So therefore, we need to assume that, right? And critical pressure ratio across the nozzle can be written by PT 13 by PC, and of course the nozzle efficiency is given, and gamma Z is given, right? 1.333, and then you can find out it happens to be 1.92. 1.92. We had seen in the turbo jet also, you know, like these values, uh, if your uh, efficiency is 0.95, you will get that. Otherwise, it will be little bit smaller values or higher values depending upon the efficiency of the nozzle. So, now we need to find out what will be the pressure ratio, you know, P T 13 by P P T naught, right. So, the actual pressure ratio across the fan nozzle with respect to ambient pressure will be P T 13 by P T uh, P C or P naught you can say this is basically naught you can say. So, that will be 2.91 that what is the meaning then that means the pressure ratio across this will be higher if it is higher then is it choked or unchoked it is basically choked. So, if it is choked that means it is having a critical velocity. What is that? That is equal to the speed of sound at the exit. So, the static temperature at the nozzle exit can be determined very easily. That is because Mach number is 1. So, from that condition you will get T 19 is equal to T C 2 divided by gamma A plus 1 T T 5. Keep in mind that we are using here gamma A. right? But there, what I have used is uh, basically could have been used the gamma A as well, because we are not adding any heat, right. So, therefore, that correction has to be made, but uh, and then you will get 213 Kelvin, 
like 2 divided by 1.4 plus 1 255.56 that is 213 Kelvin. You got my point there in that. So, uh, the static pressure at the nozzle exit P 9 becomes P 19 by P C and uh, P C by P T 13 we have already evaluated. So, you will get the P 19 as 40.2. That means, the P 19 is not same as that of the your what you call uh, ambient pressure, which happens to be 26.5 kilo Pascal, but now it is 40.2 kilo Pascals. So, the by using the equation of state density of gas at the nozzle exit can be determined, because you use the equation of state and then find out, because you know P 19, you know T 19 and then substitute those values and you will get this thing right. And uh, similarly, we can find out V 19, which is same as that of the speed of the sound and that is uh, here again, this will be gamma A right, R T C right, you will put 1.4 to 87 to 13 and that is 292.54, if we substitute these values, you will get. So, uh, by knowing this, I can find out A 19 by m dot f, which is very easily from the continuity equation, you know, we can get this and that is nothing but uh, 1 over rho 19 by V 19, you will just substitute these values, you will get this 5.2 10 into 10 power to minus 3 meter square second per kg. And uh, specific thrust with respect to total mass flow rate contributed by the fan can be evaluated as, because we know that T S F is the alpha divided by alpha plus 1, alpha is your bypass ratio, which is nothing but your what alpha is equal to 5. In this case, we will substitute values, you know V 19 we have evaluated, V naught we have evaluated, this portion we have also evaluated and this is with respect to f right right we have already evaluated this is p19 by p0 so if you look at uh, p19 we know and uh, p0 we know because p19 is higher than the p0 in this case so when you substitute these values you will get the 31.67 uh, newton second per kg I think this will be kilo Newton per second kg. So, the total pressure ratio across uh, at the station 3 is given by P T 3 by P T 2, which is 20, right. Uh, because why we have taken this 10 into 2, that is the fan pressure ratio. Therefore, we have taken it as a 20, right. That you keep in mind. So, P T 3 will become, you know, P, P, uh, 20 into 38.61, because we already determined what will be P T 2, right. So, you can get that. Using the polytropic efficiency of compression, let us now evaluate this T T 3 by T T 2 into P T 3 by P T 2, eta minus 1, eta P, uh, sorry, uh, gamma min, uh, minus 1 divided by gamma A and eta P C. So, when you substitute these values, you will get 2.74 and then from that uh, we know T T 2. So, you can get T T 3 as 700.02 Kelvin. By carrying out energy balance across the combustor, we can find out expression for fuel air ratio. I mean we have already done uh, this thing, we know all those values T T 4 we know that is given, T T 3 already evaluated and delta S is given, eta B is given. So, all you substitute and get that values F that is fuel air ratio. So, as the uh, pressure ratio across the combustion chamber is 0 0.95, so you can get basically P T 3 is pi B, pi B is your 0 0.95 into P T 4, now P T 3 this will be P T 3. Now, P T 4 will be basically pi B into P T 3, because pi B is what? P T 4 by P T 3 station number, if you look at combustion chamber, right it is uh, 3 and this is your 4. So, pi b will be p t 4 by p t 3. So, p t 3 is equal to pi b into p t 3 right 0 0.95 into 772 
that will be little lower than the PT 3 that is 777, 733.4 kilo Pascal. So, we look at turbine, the total temperature at the exit of turbine is to be evaluated. We know that we know that the function of turbine is to supply the requisite power to the compression and the fan. So, we can write down that uh, the compressor work plus fan work will be supplied by the turbine and there is an efficiency, you know mechanical efficiency, which will be always lower than the 1. So, if you uh, write in terms of you know temperature and C p like uh, enthalpy change, then you will arrive at this relationship T t 5 is equal to T t 4 minus C p a divided by C p g eta m 1 plus f then T 3 3 minus T t 2 alpha T t 13 minus T t 2, right that is T t 2. So, when you substitute these values, you will get as uh, 892.84, because all these things we know, I mean C p z eta m f already we have evaluated, T t 3 is evaluated, T t 13 is evaluated, this is evaluated, this is evaluated. So, you just substitute and those values. So, P t 5 by P t 4, we can evaluate using the again isentropic for the what you call <coughs> the turbine and we will substitute these values and get this number. So, uh, by this we can get, find out P t 5 as the 50.6 kilo Pascal. So, now for nozzle we need to determine the critical pressure ratio across the nozzle, you know. Uh, and uh, we will do the similar thing, we will find it is happens to be 1.914 and keep in mind here we will have to use gamma g because it is a hot right. So, therefore, we will have to use the gamma g uh, and in case of a fan we will uh, we'll be using gamma a that is 1.4 and the actual pressure ratio across the nozzle will be P t 5 by P naught which is 1.9 if you look at this ratio is less than that of the critical pressure, right. Of course, it is very little if you look at that way, it will be almost critical, right. Okay. So, therefore, one has to be little careful in doing because the situation will change, but in this case we will consider that nozzle is not choked because P t 5 by P naught less than P t 5 by P c and then if it is not choked P 9 is equal to not that means nozzle is fully expanded. So, we can evaluate this thing and we using this 2 eta n C p T t 5 1 minus P 9 by P t 5 gamma z divided by gamma g right for the nozzle right. So, uh, by we know these values T t 5 we know this P 9 P t 5 C p this will be C p g okay. eta n all those things we know. So, if you look at uh, I am using eta C p g 1148 into 892.84, then you will get this 5939 meter per second. The specific thrust for the core stream we can evaluate because there is no contribution of thrust due to the pressure, right. So, it is only due to the momentum and you will get that the specific thrust for the core engine is 50 newton ton per second, I think my hunch is that it will be kilo newtons, because it is a, it looks to me. So, you will have to cross check that. The total specific thrust of the turbo engine can be estimated as you know T s plus this thing that is you know you just add and you get this number 81.67 kilo newton per second per kg, it looks to me like that. So, T s f c can be evaluated as T s f c f divided by T s 0.029 divided 81.67, you will get 355.1 milligram per Newton per second. <coughs> so, uh, we can evaluate the propulsive efficiencies right and substitute these values and you will get the same thing what we had done. Keep in mind that this propulsive efficiency 73.92, which is happens to be quite a bit high of course, the thermal efficiency being reduced. So, is a smaller values. So, with this uh, you know uh, we will
stop over and uh, we will discuss this maybe if you are having doubt little later on. And uh, now we will move into the turbo prop engine. So, uh, if you look at turbo prop engines uh, which is having uh, you know we have already discussed in the ideal cycle it is having a propeller having a compressor which uh, you know and then combustion chamber that is the high pressure turbine and low pressure turbine is connected to the propeller through a gear box right. And uh, most of the thrust is being obtained by the propeller and small portion is being obtained by expanding gas in the nozzle generally conversion nozzle is being used. And the processes will be similar to the turbo jet engine only difference would be here that in this portion that is the expansion in the high pressure turbine this is high pressure turbine and low pressure turbine will be much higher as compared to the nozzle. Nozzle is very very small that you should keep in mind right and the uh, rest of the things is similar to that of the turbo jet engine or the core engine of the uh, what you call turbo fan engine. So, what we will do we will basically look at the similar expressions I mean which we have already done this for the core right engines we are not considering the propeller part and which if you will recognize these are the similar terms I am mean like you know V 9 by A naught and flight Mach number and then T 9 by T naught we have which you have already seen and V 9 by A naught you know and these are the terms which we are very familiar with. Let me not spend time on this from the definition of a work output coefficient for the core stream one can really get the T C V naught divided by the M dot C and C P and T naught. So, if you look at you can get an expression like this you know you can derive it very easily we had done similar thing in the case of your ideal cycle except this term this term is due to the pressure thrust which is a extra because here nozzle is not you know fully expanded right. So, therefore, this term is extra which will be similar to that what we had done earlier for case of turbo jet engine or turbo fan engine. So, the expression for V 9 by V, uh, v 9 by A naught will be uh, similar, but only a terms what you will get here we have separated it as tau T H and tau T L. Instead of that we generally use as tau T right. We had never really separate this high pressure and low pressure turbine temperature ratio that is the only difference rest of the things are fine. And this you keep in mind this will be I guess V z minus 1. So, the carrying out the energy balance for the main combustor in the core engine we will get the similar expression as I have shown here like uh, which is same for both turbo fan turbo prop turbo you know. Uh, jet engines. So, we need not to really do anything, but this is the very important part we must look at it because the energy balance between high pressure turbine and the compression and also we will be looking at the energy balance between the low pressure turbine and propeller. So, if you look at W dot C is nothing but eta m h into W t h right and uh, you can write down m dot a C p a and uh, this m dot a we also write this as m dot c keep in mind right ok. m dot a this a is equal to m dot c what we use. So, you should not get confused and uh, multiplied by t t 3 minus t t 2 eta m h m dot f plus m dot f uh, m dot a plus m dot f into c p z t t 4 minus t t 4.5 keep in mind this is very important one is for the high pressure turbine. So, when you uh, do that and where eta m uh, h is the mechanical efficiency high pressure shaft, when you simplify it and uh, express in terms of temperature ratio you will get as tau T h is equal to 1 minus 1 over eta m h 1 plus f tau r divided by tau lambda multiplied by tau c minus 1 right. So, if you look at this is the same as that of the what you are getting for the turbo jet engine 
or the core engine of the turbofan. There is nothing much difference. Only thing is that in, in, in place of this, we are using the tau h here, there it will be tau t. This is in this case turbo prop engine tau t h. And we know that power consumed by propeller is equal to power supplied by low pressure turbine. With this, we can write down this power produced uh, consumed by the propeller is equal to eta g b. This is the gearbox efficiency, eta m l that is the mechanical efficiency of the low uh, what you call pressure turbine shaft, right? And m dot 4.5. C p g T t 4.5 minus T t 4 and when you do little manipulations and you will get basically you know this expression. How you will get like I can divide it by this is as T t 4.5 and this is T t 4.5 and that is 1 right. And <coughs> if you look at this is nothing but your your tau t l right. And when I divide this, I need to multiply it by here 4.5, yes or no, right. So, and then this uh, expression T t 4.5 and C p z, I can express in terms of tau lambda C p a t naught and tau t h. I am just leaving it, because if you look at the by definition, what is lambda? Lambda is equal to C p z T t 4 divided by C p a T naught, yes or no, right. And in place of uh, T t 4, let me just do little bit and then leave it T t 4 by T t 4.5 T t 4.5 divided by T naught. And this is, what is this one? This is nothing but your tau T h is it tau t h or 1 over tau t h that is 1 over tau t h yes or no by definition t t 4.5 divided by t t 4 is tau t h right. So, therefore, it will be 1 over tau t h and you will do that you will get these values I will leave it here for you to look at it. So, uh, now we will uh, you know look at this uh, coefficient of the propeller. So, that is C propeller, if you look at eta propeller W dot propeller and uh, divide by m dot C C P A T naught. And we have already looked at that eta W dot propeller will be eta G B and eta M L m dot 4.5 C P A T naught tau T H tau lambda 1 minus tau T L that we have already looked at. If you divide it, you will get basically what you are doing, you are basically multiplying this, you know, substituting these values here, right. When you substitute, then C p t a you will cancel it out here m dot uh, m dot 4.5 by m dot c is nothing but 1 plus f. So, that is why it is coming over here, right, and the rest of the things are as usual. So, if you look at this C propeller, we can express in terms of this. So, hence the total, uh, you know, uh, total uh, the coefficient of the power will be equal to C prop plus C C and then total specific thrust and work out, you know, coefficient becomes basically uh, T S is equal to T divided by M dot C and this is C total C p a and T naught divided by V naught. So, expression of specific power will be W dot total divided by M dot C. Keep in mind that all the time in case of turbo prop engine, we are multiplied by the or uh, dividing by the mass flow rate through the core engine. So, that is nothing but C total C p a and T naught. So, let us derive an expression for T s f c and P s f c. So, T s f c will be f into V naught divided by C total C p a T naught and this is same as that what we had done for the ideal engine, right, ideal cycle analysis. So, P s f c will be a similar thing only difference is the m dot f divided by the 
power produced by the you know specific power produced by the uh, engine total right. So, that will be C total C p a and T naught you know f divided by C total C p and T naught. So, thermal efficiency will be as usual and keep in mind that this thermal efficiency we have evaluated in real cycle without considering the pressure effect right. Okay. So, that you should keep in mind and the overall efficiency uh, will be basically W uh, total divided by m f delta S c and keep in mind that propulsive efficiency you will get by determining the overall efficiency and thermal efficiency in case of turbo prop engine right. But in case of turbo jet and turbo prop we get directly. So, that is the only difference you should keep in mind so far efficiency is concerned the rest of the efficiency are similar. Now, we will uh, carry out a basically parametric analysis and see what we are getting. What we are doing here we are taking this uh, tau t you know as various values like uh, your 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and 0 0.83. And if you look at these uh, curves, like uh, you know, is corresponding to the specific thrust which is plotted on the left hand side, and here, of course, the pressure ratio across compression. You can see that this uh, the solid line is corresponding to the real cycle, and dashed line corresponding to the ideal cycle. And in this case, specific thrust uh, goes on incre increases with the fan pressure ratio, have a peak values, and then it goes on decreasing. Right. And uh, in the case of ideal cycle, it is having similar nature, but only thing is that uh, in the case of know real cycle you are getting the lower values most of the pressure ratio range across the compression. Of course, uh, in some places it is going up and above the ideal cycles, but uh, and as you go on increasing this temperature ra ratio across the you know turbine right it is a turbine okay this is the turbine so you will find that the specific thrust decreases what is the meaning of that because the uh, temperature ratio across the turbine is increasing means what it is other way around that means expansion in the turbine is low right because this is a 1 minus 0 0.8, it will be 0 0.2 percent what it will be expansion will be there. That means, temperature ratio you know will be other way around because it is defined in the opposite downstream divided by the upstream of a component right that always we define. So, therefore, it is a smaller value means expansion is low, higher values means expansion is more. Right. So, the specific thrust will be decreasing and of course, uh, if you look at TSFC which is just opposite that is 0 0.8 values you know the uh, tau t of 0 0.8 the specific uh, th thrust specific fuel consumption it uh, decreases and attains a minimum values and then again it increases for the real cycle and similar thing you will get in case of an ideal only difference between uh, this real case and ideal case is that that real case will have a higher TSFC for a particular values of pressure ratio. For example, if I take 10 then you know you will get these values of much higher and if I put uh, these values you know this will be much lower. So, right. So, therefore, you will get a higher thrust specific fuel consumption due to losses which is 
I mean OBS case and as of course, the tau T goes on decreases, you will get a lower TSFC which is usual, I mean expected. And if you look at the CC, I mean like you know core engines, like you will find that CC is uh, basically decreasing right as it is with the pi pressure ratio it uh, sorry that C C it goes on increasing and reaches a uh, certain values uh, at the higher pressure ratio across the compression. And the real case as I told it is a solid line is having a lower value as compared to the uh, ideal one which is the dashed line for a particular condition. And of course, uh, as it is um, decreases that is uh, in this one, this one basically tau t is equal to 0 0.8 and similarly this is tau t is equal to 0 0.7 and this is tau t is 0 0.6 right. And uh, which is expected because the losses will be more, so therefore you will expect to have a work output coefficient will be lower in case of a real cycle right for a particular pressure ratio a particular turbine uh, you know uh, temperature ratio and of course the uh, c propeller that is it is decreases with increase in pressure ratio across the compression and this is having a higher value as compared to ideal cycle right because the fan you know which will be taking the more amount of work and then it will be higher than that. So, uh, of course, this is for tau t is equal to 0.7 and this is for the tau t is equal to 0.8. So, it is uh, if you look at other way around you will get a fan pressure ratio which will be higher. So, what we look at is uh, uh, you know advanced uh, turbo prop engines. Uh, because of fact that you know this propeller cannot really operate at a very high speed that is uh, one limitation or in other around if you look at the turboprop engine cannot really fly at a high Mach number. For a particular RPM of the engines you know when you uh, fly then what will happen it will be having a very higher blade. So, then the blade tip will attain a local in you know, local uh, velocity having a uh, speed more than the speed of sound. Then the shock will be formed and then you will have several other problems. So, the losses will be very much higher right. And uh, in order to overcome that thing what people are you know thinking about that why not reduce the length of the blade and use the more number of blades. Because number of blades less then you know the work transferred to the momentum transferred to the air for getting thrust will be reduced right. But if it is other way if you increase then you are getting a higher you know efficiency of transferring the momentum. So, that you will get higher thrust. So, that was the idea which people try to do that and then they felt that they will have to use a very highly swept blades right. When you do that then uh, now as a result so that you can fly at a higher Mach number right that is one advantages and also you can have a higher thrust right because the your uh, static thrust should be much higher in case of turbo prop engine. So, that is the advantages. So, they come up with a ideas of a you know more number of blades they experimented with the 8 number of blades generally you know 3, 4 people use 8 number of blades which have a much higher, but these are highly swept vents right. And these highly swept vents can be operated at a higher rpm as well because when you reduce this uh, speed then the gear box you know will have very big because the suppose your engine is operated at 50000 rpm you will have to bring to 2000 rpm right it will be gear ratio of 25 is to 1 
so the gear box will be much higher because the power level of the engine will be very high in this case not like your automobile engine some few kilowatt this will be order of megawatt right so therefore you know when you reduce the rpm to lower then you will be reducing the gear box weight as well so but the problem with this kind of you know vents it creates a lot of noise right and uh, of course to um, and it will be also give a offset kind of twisting right because the that is not the p vector as asymmetric thrust will be generated when properly rotated it will create a asymmetric thrust so the here it will be more you know stringent so in order to overcome that thing you, they put uh, you know a way of course this is a static uh, kind of uh, things one can think of but there is a, another concept which was being used you know known as unducted fan engines right but if you want like if you look at this the, these are the vents you can make it contra rotating that means if it is rotating in a clockwise the other will be anti clockwise right then what you will get out of it you will overcome the problem of the uh, asymmetric thrust and it will be more efficient because the air is moving through the blade and it is going and it is a waste so you won't get the thrust because it will be having a swill component so what you will give is axial component will give you the thrust so therefore in this case you will avoid doing that that means at the ex if there is a two you know uh, what you call uh, stages of blade or two rows of blade then you know like and it is rotating other uh, opposite direction so then you can get a higher thrust so people have got you know around 6 to 16 percent higher in the thrust right using this but however it is not being used uh, in practical situation people are saying there is a gear box is a problem because you will have to transfer the uh, what you call the power from the low pressure turbine to the propeller with the help of a gear box right which is a propeller generally in the front right as you see it is in the front but then why not you attach this you know propeller to the turbine itself right instead of you know using a gear box we can directly do that and rotate at a little higher rpm right which is same as that of the low pressure turbine right so that was the idea which uh, people uh, use that is the unducted fan engines right if you look at uh, they directly with the uh, turbine it is attached the blades right there are and which are counter rotating right it will be one in the clockwise direction the maybe let us say first one and second one will be the counter clockwise direction so they could manage to get a higher thrust and overcome the problem of the gear box right weight will be reduced the efficiency but it is having a problem problem is that noise noise is very high and there is another problem of leakage right the leakage of this uh, you know gas hot gas is another biggest problem so therefore uh, of course, the G has uh, you know have developed this engine quite some time back and they use a very highly sweat van as well you can see, but it is not uh, being used uh, in practice, but however maybe in future it will be used. And uh, we will be uh, you know looking at the rocket engines in the next class onwards and I will stop over.